From surprising geological formations and natural phenomena to creatures that literally defy imagination, new technological advancements mean that scientists are discovering amazing things every year. And that's just the work of Mother Nature. Not all things wait to be found, however. Plenty of crazy and cool things have washed up or swam up on shores across the globe. Casco Bay, just look how beautiful that lobster is. These items certainly raise questions and can even provide the answers to previously unknown mysteries. Are you ready? Here are 15 of the most surprising things discovered in the middle of the ocean. <coughs> Creepy giant squid. We know they exist, and we also know how long they've inhabited the sea. But capturing one of these elusive creatures on camera is almost unheard of. But scientists recently achieved the holy grail of underwater cinematography filming a living giant squid. They were first identified in 1925. However, since then, few specimens have been recovered and there's still very little known about this species. Our knowledge is based on how very few specimens that have been captured in deep sea fisheries were found in the stomachs of this species' most significant predator, the sperm whale. So, this footage is quite a marvel. It's the first giant squid ever recorded in U.S. waters, a 10-12 to 12 foot juvenile in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's a small one. These massive squids are reported to measure over 40 feet in total length when fully grown. The lucky team behind the squid footage used a stealth camera system in their deep sea exploring. The machine baits them with an electronic jellyfish, which imitates the deep sea prey these squids love. But as you can see, the giant squid backed off from the bait once it realized the e-jelly was not food. We did not find a monster, researchers made clear in the post about their journey. Giant squids are smart too. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Do you think this fisherman is standing a little too close to the bow of this boat? Certainly he's noticed there's a monster in the water. We couldn't miss it. But the question is, what kind of shark is it? Is it the iconic Great White? The Great White Shark is the world's largest known predatory fish. It has 300 teeth, yet does not chew its food. Sharks rip their prey into mouth-sized pieces which are swallowed whole. The shark's heavy, torpedo-shaped body allow it to cruise efficiently for long periods of time, and then suddenly switch to high-speed bursts in pursuit of prey, sometimes leaping out of the water. Or is this beast in the water the Meg? The Megalodon shark became extinct 3.6 million years ago, but estimates suggest it grew up to 60 feet in length, three times longer than the largest recorded great white shark. But do you think that's what we're looking at here? Use the hashtag missing topic with your comments below. Let's get this conversation started. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Mysterious Tar Lily Speaking of the Gulf of Mexico, researchers stumbled across an unfamiliar ecosystem during a recent dive. At 6,000 feet below the sea surface, sonar detected several large objects so they sent the rover to investigate. What they found were large rocks shaped like large flowers, the mysterious tar lily. In a nutshell, they're the remains of an old asphalt volcano in the shape of a lily, so it was dubbed a tar lily. It was covered with various sea creatures and found a second tar lily was found nearby. They should technically be called asphalt lilies because they're rare types of volcanoes under the ocean surface that are asphalt volcanoes. As you could guess, they erupt asphalt instead of lava. The asphalt is very hot when it erupts, but the cold seawater quickly cools it. And you get this. It looks like someone squeezed a tube of toothpaste straight out of the ground. As the asphalt cools, the stream of material breaks off and cracks until the eruption stops. The cold asphalt spreads out in a flower shape, and now these tar lilies are a thriving ecosystem. When the sonar first detected these formations, the crew thought they may have come across a shipwreck and were ready to start identifying bits of wreckage. Instead, they found something equally fascinating. <laughs> Headless Chicken Monster Seen during a Gulf of Mexico expedition at a depth of 1.3 miles, plus another video was taken from a remotely operated vehicle off the east coast of Africa at a depth of 7,100 feet. The common names for this bizarre creature include Spanish Dancer and you guessed it, the Headless Chicken Monster. This so-called monster is a rarely sighted one, pinkish red creature with a body like a plump-breasted chicken, just without a visible head. In truth, this hen-mimicking swimmer is a sea cucumber, 
but unlike most sea cucumbers, this species has fins which allow it to swim. While most types of sea cucumbers spend the majority of their time on the seabed, swimming sea cucumbers like the headless chicken monster land only to feed. The transparent monster can be seen foraging on the ocean floor with the various tentacles as if it's going for a stroll. It can also be seen swimming upward with its fins, which most sea cucumbers can't do. Sea cucumbers are in the same family of marine animals that include starfish and sea urchins. There are about 1,250 known species some of which are harvested illegally because they're prized as delicacies and folk medicine ingredients. 900-Year-Old Sword A sword believed to have belonged to a crusader knight who sailed to the Holy Land almost a millennium ago was recovered by a sharp-eyed amateur diver. A man diving off the coast of northern Israel, not far from his home, recently stumbled onto a 900-year-old sword dated to the time of the Crusades. He spotted the sword and other centuries-old artifacts on the seabed off the coast, where shifting sands had apparently made them suddenly visible. He literally found treasure. The four-foot-long sword, which has been preserved in perfect condition, is a beautiful and rare find. It was found encrusted with marine organisms, but it apparently made of iron. It's exciting to encounter such a personal object, taking you 900 years back into time to a different era with knights, armor, and swords. Funny thing is, archaeologists had already begun monitoring the area, a natural cove that offered shelter to ships for millennia. A regular person and some diving gear scooped it up all by himself. Unpredictable conditions in the ocean often bring artifacts to the surface. A rise in the number of people diving recreationally in the area means that more of these objects have re-emerged in recent years. Earlier discoveries have shown that the site was active as long as 4,000 years ago. <laughs> Ooh. Googly eyed squid. A purple squid with big old googly eyes was recently spotted by scientists off the coast of Southern California. The team spotted this off the coast of California at a depth of 2,950 feet. The stubby squid is a small cephalopod, a family of marine animals that includes octopus, squid, and nautilus. The stubby squid looks like a cross between an octopus and a squid, but is more closely related to cuttlefish. It has eight tentacles or arms with suckers and two retractable tentacles like squid. The head or mantle is oblong and rounded, and their coloration ranges from red-brown to gray-green. And they can change colors to match their environmental or ecological context. But don't the stubby squid's giant eyes look painted on? These adorable sea creatures can be found in waters from Japan to Southern California and typically dwell along the ocean floor at depths of around 984 feet, though they've been spotted as deep as 4,200 feet. That's a big difference. This species spends life on the seafloor, burrowing into the sediment to camouflage, leaving their eyes poking out to spot prey like shrimp and small fish, and they're found from Japan to Southern California. They move their fins or push water from their body cavities to move around, and they leave behind a blob of black ink when disturbed. <laughs> Real Life Mermaid Dozens of excited visitors gather every evening on the seashore near a town in Israel. Why? If you said mermaid sighting, you'd be right. Sort of. According to numerous eyewitnesses, the mythical sea creatures look like a cross between a little girl and a dolphin and only comes out at sunset. The creature, according to the fast-growing local legend, performs a series of acrobatic tricks before disappearing beneath the Mediterranean waves. The town's tourism board is, of course, delighted with their newfound fame and local mystery fauna, taking a cue from the town of Inverness, Scotland, on the shore of Loch Ness, the government has offered a $1 million reward for the first person to photograph it. Mermaids have long held a fascination for seafaring people. There are a few dozen significant historical claims of actual mermaid sightings. Most of them are clearly myths and legends, such as true stories about lovely young women who married sailors but were later discovered to be shape-shifting mermaids. Of course, if the mermaid does not exist, perhaps it's a hoax, an optical illusion, or a simple misperception of a known animal. Blanket Octopus If you're a fan of Harry Potter and have seen the movies, then you know what a Dementor is. It's a gliding, wraith-like dark creature, widely considered to be one of the foulest of the dark creatures to inhabit the wizarding world. Of course, it's fictional, but this underwater creature is giving us Dementor vibes. Meet the Blanket Octopus. The truth is, they're incredibly elusive. Very, very few videos exist, and not much is known about their biology. To help spread the word on these lovely creatures, here are some reasons why blanket octopuses are our new favorite cephalopods. The blanket octopus is stunning. 
Between the arms of the female blanket octopus are long sheets of multicolored, changing skin for a truly stunning display. The female spends her entire life in the open ocean and looks fabulous doing so. Females have weapons, too. They can literally rip the tentacles right off Portuguese man o' war jellies and use them like little octopus nunchucks. Plus, the blankets of blanket octopuses can break off. This may be accidental or a way to distract predators. Given the internet's obsession with both large cephalopods and bizarre animals, you'd think blanket octopuses would be all over it by now. I mean, a six-foot octopus dressed in a flowing gown? We're here for it. <laughs> Mutated starfish. This unidentifiable humanoid sea creature has been found alive on a beach in China. You call that living? We're kidding. But seriously, the strange creature was reportedly found floating near the shore. Locals were baffled as to what it could be. In fact, we're wondering the exact same thing. No wonder people were hesitant to approach it. However, it wasn't long before one curious person wandered over and picked it up to get his friend to record some footage of it. Viewers were also mystified as to what the creature in the weird video could be. Bizarrely, the creature, which appears to roughly resemble a massive flat baby, starts moving its limbs and head. Others pointed out a striking resemblance to the gingerbread man, while another said it looked like God had stepped on it. While the man who found this creature is holding it up to show his friend, we can see it moving its legs. The creature seems to have a human-like head with some sort of arms and legs. The video was posted online where it was picked up by a conspiracy theory YouTube channel where it has amassed views around the world. One person commented, in my opinion, this could be a new species of sea life or a mutated starfish. <laughs> Sticky shoe fish. Have you ever seen those fish that seem to be stuck to the bellies of sharks or riding on the backs of whales? The sticky shoe fish is known as a remora fish, and as you can see in the video, they can cling to anything. A manta ray, the side of a boat, their front dorsal fins evolved over time into an organ that sits like a suction cup on the top of their heads, allowing the remora to attach to a passing animal, usually on the belly or underside. As for this unique ride-share relationship, it benefits both species. They eat scraps of prey dropped by the shark, but also remain more than a convenient meal. The sharks protect them from predators and give them free transportation throughout the oceans. Plus, the host is also kept clean of irritating parasites that could affect its health in negative ways. Studies show that many shark species seem to understand the benefits a remora has on its life and well-being. They've been observed slowing down, even risking their own survival, to allow remoras to get on board. So, the remora can keep the shark very happy, and vice versa. They lack swimming bladders and yet travel across huge bodies of water with the help of their host without taking any efforts by themselves. There are around eight different species in total across the world. Deep Sea Smokers The Factories of the Sea Check these things out. At the bottom of the sea, in a depth of several thousand feet, these deep sea smokers bring up valuable raw materials from inside the earth. Their vents seem to give off black smoke like underwater industrial chimneys. In the late 1970s, scientists on a routine study of the ocean floor in the Pacific made a discovery that would rock the entire scientific community. Not far from the Galapagos Islands, nearly 8,000 feet below the surface, was a strange alien landscape littered with what looked like chimneys and expelling clouds of black smoke. Surrounding these chimneys was a unique type of ecosystem unlike any other. Until this day, science had always assumed that all life on Earth obtained its energy from the sun. Here was proof for the first time that life could be sustained by the Earth itself. That's big. Within these regions, seawater seeps down into the Earth's crust through cracks and fissures in the ocean floor. The water is then heated by magma below the surface. As the water is heated to a boil, it expands and rises back to the surface. When it reaches the ocean floor, the water is a dark chemical soup. The dark color of the water spewing forth from these vents has earned them the name Black Smokers. <laughs> Basket Star this unusual creature has five arms sprouting from its central disc, and each arm branches out over and over and over again until you end up with a kind of mesh. That's how they get their name, the Basket Star. These are incredibly flexible tendrils that they use to catch food and to breathe. If the current is too much for them, they'll curl up to avoid getting swept away. And like other sea stars, these animals lack blood and achieve gas exchange with these flexible basket-like arms. Incredibly, these unusual creatures usually hide in crevices during the day 
and then climb to an elevated point to feed at night. They feed by perching in an elevated position and extending their arms in a net-like fashion perpendicular to the current. In small crustaceans, jellyfish, and other small animals get swept up into their twisting and turning arms. It's that easy. There's little chance of escape, too. Each branch has tiny sharp hooks, so delicious food cannot swim away. Along with the tube feet and mucus, nature's lubricant, they ferry food along to the mouth in the central disc. Basket stars are found all over the world, but most of them live in the deep sea and reach two feet across when you include the arms. But then you see them in a different light, like ivy and ferns in the darkness of night. The Phantom Jelly in 25 plus years of scientific underwater surveys, researchers have been lucky enough to observe this rare animal on camera only nine times, thousands of feet beneath the sea. That's because the giant phantom jelly is a rare, shy animal at depths we rarely reach, one that can inspire awe and terror because, well, I mean, look at it. Now, thanks to researchers, a remote operated vehicle spotted the elusive giant phantom jellyfish in the midnight zone an area of the open ocean about 3,200 feet below the surface and one of just nine of the team's encounters with the species since it was discovered in 1899. Footage and photos unveil the crimson animal's bulbous body and its four billowing blanket-like arms that have the capability to stretch 33 feet out into the water and uncannily resemble a hat and scarf flying in the wind. Full phantom fantasy. It also lives in what's known as the Midnight Zone a location in the water column that's not quite the twilight zone or the abyss. That's the sweet spot between 3,300 and 13,000 feet below the surface. No sunlight reaches this depth of the ocean, which is frankly terrifying to think of in the context of a ghostly jellyfish like this. <laughs> sea pork. They say that pork is the other white meat. Who knew it could be seafood? But chances are we would never want to eat this. And recently, people have seen things they can't quite figure out. Hundreds of little purple pimpled objects that looked like earlobes or maybe tiny kidneys. Something that looked like a blood clot half smothered by sand. A scrap of rubber, maybe, that has sprouted lime green fur. The list goes on. The question always remained. What the heck is it? Seaport can be bologna pink, purple as bloody liver, or the creamy beige of roast turkey. The name is said to come from the fact that dead tunicates sometimes resemble slabs of glistening fat. The term can refer to several species of tunicates, invertebrates that have been siphoning, filtering, and squirting water for hundreds of millions of years. But do they have a face? Can they move around? Many of these creatures are composed of colonies of organisms called zooids, nestled together in a gloopy tunic. This sheath is made partly of cellulose and functions as a sort of gelatinous exoskeleton like strong, squishy armor. The majority of these organisms find strength in numbers, cemented to the seafloor, usually no deeper than 660 feet. Cotton Candy Lobster A Maine lobsterman recently made a startling discovery when he pulled up a rare lobster with a bright blue speckled shell, the color of cotton candy. He found the female lobster in Casco Bay, an inlet of the Gulf of Maine. Its name is Hattie. The reason for Hattie's special shell is likely due to an inherited genetic mutation of her diet. Lobsters usually have three or four different pigments, like red, blue, and yellow, that layer together to produce the lobster's dark brown tone. Their color comes from a pigment molecule that binds to other proteins. Depending on those bonds, the shell reflects different wavelengths of light that we can see as color. Some living lobsters naturally have more or less of a given pigment, which can produce an off-color critter. Hattie appears to be missing all pigments, except blue, which leaves her with a cotton candy-colored hue. Like flamingos, lobsters incorporate pigments from their diet into their coloration, and missing a key food source could fade their color. If the cause of Hattie's unusual color is her diet, eating pigment-rich foods could change her color back to normal over time. Experts estimate the lobster is 1 in 100 million found, though it's unclear exactly how many there are in the wild. The baby blue shellfish turn up about once every four to five years. Great Pacific Garbage Patch Also known as the Pacific Trash Vortex, this garbage patch, a patch of marine debris particles, is in the central North Pacific Ocean. It's a collection of plastic and floating trash that originates from the Pacific Rim, including countries in Asia, North America, and South America. Yikes! Despite the common public perception of the patch existing as giant islands of floating garbage, 
Its low density prevents detection by satellite imagery or even by casual boaters or divers in the area. This is because the patch is a widely dispersed area consisting primarily of suspended fingernail-sized or smaller, often microscopic, garbage particles. Researchers claim that the patch covers 620,000 square miles. Some of the plastic in the patch is over 50 years old and includes the fragments of items such as plastic lighters, toothbrushes, water bottles, pens, baby bottles, cell phones, plastic bags, you name it. Estimated to be double the size of Texas, the area contains more than 3 million tons of plastic. The Ocean Cleanup Project returned to the waters of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch with a redesigned trash collecting system that was its largest yet and marked by a massive haul of plastic waste. In 2020, they removed just over 500,000 pounds. These videos prove just when you think you've seen it all, the ocean never disappoints. It's always a great place to see new things and marvel at more amazing creatures. So, if you agree, like and subscribe and hang on for more great videos. Mm-hmm. <laughs>